mountains in southwestern British Columbia are a formidable barrier between the two million people of Greater Vancouver and the rest of their country. Two transportation corridors traverse these mountains, emplaced there by history and heroic effort, serving the needs of the people by road and rail and pipeline. It was inevitable that these needs would eventually outgrow the capacity of the corridors. By the 1970s, it became evident that capacity would have to be increased. After much study, the decision was taken in 1979 to establish a third corridor over a 10-year time period. Then came the invitation to the world to visit Expo 86 in Vancouver. In September 1984, a second decision was taken. Complete the highway in 20 months. Within this time frame, British Columbians were facing the largest highway development ever undertaken in North America. early morning, six months after the fast-track decision was made. Some 3,000 people wake up to work on the project. face 115 kilometers of challenging terrain to work through. They face altitude, a full range of climate simultaneously, winter at the summit, with spring either side, plus extremes between coast and interior, mountains between them. face the awesome responsibility of building sections of highway on an interrelated schedule where none can be late. Nearly 2,000 hectares to be cleared, 5 million cubic meters of rock to be blasted. The first option was to reconstruct the existing Trans-Canada Highway from near the town of Hope through the Fraser Canyon to Kamloops. Traffic would be disrupted. Design speed would be low. Costs would be enormous. The second option was a northern route from West Vancouver through difficult terrain to intersect with the Fraser Canyon Highway. Costs would be high. Traffic flows to the south would not be served. The Coquihalla option was chosen, 115 kilometers from Hope to Merritt, 
76 more to Kamloops, 80 kilometers shorter than the Fraser Canyon route. Even better, the connection east to the Okanagan could be added. Due for completion in 20 months, phase one, hope to merit, along with ancillary improvements elsewhere. The spring of 1985 moves up the mountains into summer along the Coquihalla Corridor. Construction work intensifies. period of clement weather, some 22 million cubic meters of earth will be excavated, over 2 million gigantic truckloads, and moved to where it is needed. Nearly 4 million tons of material, rocks and pebbles, will be crushed and screened to create the grades of gravel which will form the future roadbed. This summer, along the entire right-of-way, 1,000 pieces of heavy equipment will be at work. These people and their machines are not just building another road in a hurry. The Coquihalla will be a divided four-lane highway through the mountains. Traffic will speed along at 100 kilometers per hour, all the way from Vancouver. It will cut a full hour of the journey and save millions in fuel costs. These people and their machines are making history. The project becomes an exercise in the art of brilliant scheduling as section by section, contract by contract, planned construction progress and unplanned delays buy to keep inflexible deadlines. The challenge of management is staggering. As far as rate cream clearing and grubbing in that area. There is probably some clearing and grubbing that we could do up in the Boston Bar Creek Canyon. Every day, a thousand consultations take place. A thousand decisions are made and approved. I understand that you've only got about 10 average so far. We're really going to have to hustle to get things done by the functions of experts in every field must be coordinated with climatic and seasonal windows and with each other to maintain progress. There is no margin for error. And an established uh, prime authority will be Alan, Yes, John. The, um, we will be allowed a window to work in stream from July 15th to August 15th. And um, we're really concerned about the coho and steelhead. Building such a highway in such terrain in 20 months is challenging enough. Designing it at the same time doubles the pressure on engineers and supervisors. Every step along the way is a critical step. 
Never before in the history of North American road building has a project pressed so hard the limits of human organization. spared to minimize and mitigate the environmental impact of the project. Maintaining, even improving, the reputation of the Coquihalla River for steelhead trout and the Coldwater River for salmon too became major goals. Not surprisingly in the mountains, sections of the highway run close to the rivers, crossing frequently. Construction was carried out behind barriers of rock and gravel to restrict siltation. The alignment called for a total of 18 river diversions. In each case, the river to be was meticulously engineered and prepared behind pre-built banks. Once complete, and not before, the barrier at the bottom was removed, and then the one at the top. Within minutes, the river flowed clear along its new bed. Teams of biologists swarm in to collect and save any stranded fish quickly returning them to the river. In every case, the fish habitat created is better than before, with rock clusters and spurs providing perfect places for resting, feeding, and breeding. The work established new standards and procedures for future application, both in the province and elsewhere. Fish and wildlife experts have taken advantage of the project to conduct ongoing research programs they plan to monitor natural productivity and, if necessary, devise measures to improve it. The same levels of diligent planning and execution were applied to every aspect of the highway's impact, whether on the natural environment or the use of it by people along the way. Fences to protect wildlife underpasses for moose and deer on migration routes, corrals and tunnels for cowboys and cattle country, even parks where people can enjoy spectacular scenery were part of the planning. Construction intensifies during the summer of 1985. Over 3,000 people are involved in the Hope Merritt Corridor. Many working 10-hour shifts around the clock, pausing for equipment maintenance. At a place called Dry Gulch, not far from the summit, an awesome bridge begins its leap across a chasm. Other bridges rise and curve simultaneously, sweeping the highway across rugged topography and untold headaches for engineers and sky workers in any time frame. Every calculation, every reinforcing rod, Every ounce of concrete poured is a critical step. Done once, done right. 38 bridges to be built, 18 interchanges, 19 vehicle underpasses, innumerable culverts to be installed, many of them enormous structures designed to handle mountain torrents, all to be ready in 20 months. Even as summer peaks below, the first drift of winter blows across Dry Gulch. 
work goes on. Essential materials must cross this bridge before winter sets in. It is the nature of mountains to collect snow and given enough of it and certain conditions to shrug it off. There are 67 avalanche paths along the Coquihalla Corridor. Even as construction proceeds, experts probe the snow above, collecting and confirming data giving input to the design of protection devices. Avalanches will roar into extensive earthworks, which will absorb their energy and protect the highway. At one point only, engineers determined the need for a snow shed, a massive concrete structure strong enough for avalanches to cross unhindered, without risk to travelers and maintenance crews. of the project are felt far beyond the Coquihalla Corridor, in plants and factories throughout central and southwest British Columbia. Some 7,000 people are hard at work producing components for the project. In all, 20,000 tons of steel components, 125,000 tons of concrete, 160 kilometers of guardrail, not merely to be made, but handled, transported to the project on schedule. employment for over 10,000 people directly, 16,000 more in spin-off jobs, at a time when all concerned really needed the work, and British Columbia needed the highway. the summer of 1985, well into the winter and beyond, 
a steady stream of mammoth components, each one precisely engineered for a particular slot in the Coquihalla, converge on the project. Timing is the essence. For each successive piece is dependent on the piece before for its usefulness in meeting deadlines, completing the project on time. By giant leaps and vindicating what many thought were near impossible plans, the pieces of this linear jigsaw, 115 kilometers long, drop gently into place. As the long hot summer of 1985 extends beyond all expectations, even those responsible for the project are looking thankfully at the sky. The Coquihalla Corridor was not virgin territory. In fact, it was the first route through the mountains in the 1800s used by fur traders and cattle drovers. They abandoned it for easier routes, but construction must contend with modern-day traffic at either end. A railroad was built in 1912, then closed in 1959, leaving only local mining and logging traffic in the valleys. But pipelines followed the railroad through, carrying oil and natural gas. The project called for more than 50 pipeline and railway crossing or relocations. Today's technology traversed the Coquihalla's history without interrupting its legacies. Innovative technology becomes the hallmark of the project. Reinforced earth walls support the roadbed at several points. A simple, brilliant technique where the weight of the grade holds itself up against sectional, level-by-level -level walls of interlocking concrete plates. spring of 1986 begins to burst up the vertical climb of the Coquihalla, the shape of the new highway begins to emerge. By now, most sections of the roadbed are complete, or nearly so. The many bridges linking them receive layers of concrete decking. Very soon, it will be possible to drive from one end to the other. Men and machines begin to spread and contour topsoil, stockpiled long before. They begin to plant it with seeds suited to their landing place boosted by fertilizer. The disturbances of the project will soon turn green.
Nearly four million tons of gravel have been laid and graded. Nearly a million tons of asphalt are spread above and compacted. The application of paint follows spring up the new Coquihalla Highway. In just 20 months, British Columbians met the challenge. A third corridor through the mountains for planned distribution of traffic loads to come. The largest highway project ever undertaken in North America in such a time frame. It will save time and money, and more than these, it will create new opportunities for all within its sphere. Even as millions discover the promise the new highway makes accessible, work on its extensions, phase two to Kamloops, phase three to the Okanagan, are under construction. The development of transportation continues to be the traditional link with prosperity for all British Columbians.